anyone here of you have never fully recovered from past accidents? All right, we've got like a half a dozen at least. And how many here would like to divorce of your past trauma? Yeah. All right. Then how many of you want more energy, more focus, and really be free of some physical symptoms? All right. I got some work to do tonight. Don't lie. <laughs> so, who am I? And why should you even listen to me? So, I'm a licensed chiropractic physician. I'm a certified traditional naturopath. I do, I'm a personal injury specialist. I'm a qualified medical examiner for the state of California. I'm a, um, a certified applied clinical nutritionist. I'm a dad. There are my two boys, me. I'm a West Coast swing dancer. <laughs> I was uh, named one of the top chiropractors by LA Magazine in last year, 2018. So where did I come from? I mentioned earlier that I actually am the first generation of Holocaust survivor. Both of my parents uh, independently went through the atrocities of the Holocaust and not knowing you know, if they were going to make it out or if they were going to live or die. Um, so by the grace of God, and, and they're smart, they, they you know, volunteered to work versus staying in the camps. And they made it through and they met years later in Los Angeles when they married and had me and my brother and my sister. Um, my first emotional trauma release technique patient ever. Uh, so uh, there was a young lady who my brother referred to me. Um, she just came out of Thalians. And now Thalians is the, the Cedar sinai Psychiatric Division. She came out of there, said, uh, come on over, and I started doing some muscle testing with her, and then I, I touched her right, her right thigh, and her arm went down. I couldn't see anything going on there. I go, well, what happened? And her, her face just changed. She goes, well, that's where he grabbed me. I go, what? She goes, well, I was date raped, and that's where he grabbed me. Oh, so I, I was freaking out on the inside. I go, but I worked with her one session, hour or so, and that one session she was able to sort of get back on track, start to trust men, and she invited me to, she met a man, invited me to a, uh, her wedding a year later. Wow. So, so let's, let's have some fun learning about what real health is, if you don't mind. So let's have a quick review of what modern health care is. So they talk about acute conditions and chronic conditions. Of course, the focus is primarily on symptom cessation. And from my standpoint, they don't really know how to help reset the body. You know, so here's some, I know, a lot of medications, Eliquis for spinal pain, Lyrica for diabetic nerve pain, Namenda for Alzheimer's. But do they really help cure, cure the body? No. They like to tell you it is. But, so this is a, a cute cartoon, so this drug may cause Dizziness, chest pain, diarrhea, loss of memory, blood clots, <laughs> joint pain, anal leakage. <laughs> so, you know, and then the pharmacist, and the, they ask, well, are those the side effects? No, 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 those are the main effects. <laughs> the side effect is it might lower your cholesterol. <laughs> <laughs> Look, there's a lot, of, a lot of books being written by medical doctors talking about lies my doctors told me, the big hype. You know, hope or hype, the obsession with medical advances, and the high cost of false promises. So, I mean, really stem cell therapy, new vaccines, opioid drugs, which we all know about. Well, let's, let's just take a step back, shall we? So we don't end up like this. And I know that there's a number of vets who take their lives either on their own or through opioid crisis. So let's talk about the secret to health. And vitality. So let's see, how were we created? So we have the brain or central processing unit of the body, spinal cord, which is like connecting our brain to all the different parts of our body, organs and muscles. And we have all these different organs, sensors, heat, sensors including heat and cold, pain, light touch, satiety. Now how does our body know that we're hungry or whenever we're full? 
There, there's a lot of specialized receptors in the body. This is, this is from the, the body's exhibition. This is a brain and a spinal cord. Slightly teased out. Here's part of our nervous system. And here's how, this is a wiring diagram that they don't teach you in grade school. Here's our wiring diagram. Does anyone, if you have a thyroid condition, does your doctor ever check the wiring to your thyroid? Yeah. There's a 99% correlation to what we call subluxation, to a block in the energy flow of your, your, your sixth and seventh cervical nerve, which, which, which is, sends energy to your thyroid gland. So how do you injure that, those two nerves? Whiplash accidents. How many here have had in, in a whiplash accident? Quite a few. How many here have thyroid issues? All right, so here might be a correlation where you go to, I'm going to call them an ivory tower endocrinologist. It's only because I have a very good friend of mine, a, an attorney, and she had a, a thyroid issue. And I had her get some tests, and then she went to see her, what she says, quote unquote, ivory tower endocrinologist. She goes, look, Dr. Benton says that I might have a thyroid condition. I might have a, an autoimmune thyroid. And he scoffed at her. And in fact, he actually did a lab test to prove me wrong. And when the lab test came back, he goes, yeah, yeah, you have it. Yeah. <laughs> so knowing how the body's wired is like a big first step to get you, to get you better. Because here's what the short circuits happen. So look, do you really have a pain problem? Or do you have a communication problem? And your body's telling you that you have a communication problem. Trauma causes nerve system interruption, and nerve system interruption causes body and mind miscommunication. And we have a feedback system to tell us that. It's called pain. It's called not feeling well. And then miscommunication leads to disease that's not at ease, and then later on, disease, a pathological issue. So here's an example of the wiring diagram of the upper neck. So we can see how there's nerves that come out from each of these levels in our spinal cord, and they go to different parts of the body. So I've just been studying this for years, and I'm able to help quickly identify. That's why I don't need you, don't need you to tell me what's going on with you. I can sort of scan your spine with a muscle test, and I'll see what's weak, and I'll say, well, how's your lung doing? You have an issue with your heart. So I'm giving away some of the secret of my magic, but that's okay. So I'm, I'm a licensed chiropractor, and chiropractic, I believe, is the only science that exactly locates the cause of this disease and adjusts it. So I like to use the analogy of a fuse breaker. Say if you're in your home, if you have too much, you know, too much power, then your fuse breaker pops off. Well, the same thing in your body. Every joint in your body and every spinal level it's like a fuse breaker. And trauma in all of its forms, could be chemical, could be emotional, could be structural, could be physical, can cause those fuse breakers to turn off. And it's my job to find out where that short circuit is and turn it back on. So if we have a one-time large force trauma to a man's spine can cause severe nerve interference. This is Superman, Christopher Reeve, who had an injury, fell from a horse, fell on his head one time, broke his neck, and he was wheelchair bound ever since. So if that one large, one time large trauma can cause this, thus wouldn't it stand to reason that a lot of small repetitive stresses to a person's spine can also cause nerve interference? And here's some forward head posture, you know, watching our phones or an iPad, you know, little children carrying huge backpacks. And this is a, could be an example of a birth trauma, someone, a doctor really yanking on a baby in an infant's neck just to pull the neck out during the birth process. Look, all precision equipment requires periodic adjustments. Our Ferraris, video cameras, pianos, violins. Our body also does. So let's go to a specialist. So what is unique about the Light Touch Healing Center? That's my office. So we use kinesiology to release, to identify and release dark trauma, unlocking the combination to your health. 
resulting in supercharged healing. Who wants some supercharged healing this evening? Yeah. You guys are falling asleep on me. I need some excitement here. Yeah. Okay, so we want to remove some of the obstructions to health and vitality. This is an example of combination lock, and it's all jumbled. And it's my job to go take you from there to there. And it unlocks the flow. I have to find out where. And some, some of you will be easy. Like I can find the tumblers like one or two times. Some of you guys, will t I'll, I'll take a while. They're like five, six, seven. You know, and then, and then sometimes your body has to process it and it can't get all of it today. We don't know until we don't ask. So muscle testing is my tool. As I thank you for explaining some of that before. That's amazing. Yeah, it's yeah. like uh, <laughs> yeah. I just wanted people to know that they have this power in this. We all have we all have this power. I really tap into your body's self-diagnostic computer. And what I mean by that, like every computer, your cars, your computer, if it doesn't feel well, it tells you. It doesn't work right, and you go into safe mode. You know, or you have a check engine light on your car. And then it'll check all the sensors. Well, your body has that same system, and it's called pain. And I go in there, and I check it through muscle testing. So let's focus a little bit about the emotional trauma release technique, which is the technique that I developed. Oh, could someone bring that up on stage? Someone's going to help me with that? Thank you very much. So it's true, then, that when you're muscle testing a patient, uh, it's really impossible for their body not to give you the truth. It's, it can get complicated. Uh, uh, actually, let's put it down so it's not, yeah, thank you very much. You have to have some clear intention. You right. know, if my yeah. intention isn't clear, I can skew the results. Right. There are times that if my body has a deficiency, then I'll find that all my patients have a deficiency. I go, wow, like five of my patients need cobalt. No, I need the cobalt mineral, and then once I clear myself up, so I, as a practitioner, as we get to these realms, I have to take better care of myself. So in the realm of emotional trauma release technique, I love this image. It's, you know, you have two little children trying to connect, and then stuck in bodies of, of two adults that have a lot of trauma, and they're just isolating from the rest of the world. So what is emotional trauma? It's an expression... Ex it's an experience producing physical symptoms, pain, depression, anxiety, emotional fixations in your body. And the body often associates a traumatic event with an emotion or emotions, like grave fear, sadness, grief, or PTSD. Oftentimes, this event is so severe that you remember the event as a defense mechanism so that your the reticular activating system is, is part of the limbic brain. So now you're hypervigilant, so that issue doesn't happen again. So it says, or if you can get close to that issue, then you, your body says, get away from there. So this phenomenon is known as fixation of emotion. And so how long will that last? So it lasts forever, essentially. Your body has, has set this, this code, and it's there 20 years later. And if something happens to you as a teenager because you're being bullied, but now you're an adult and you have more self-esteem, you think you got everything going on, but then you think about that past trauma, your body starts reacting like you just re-experienced it. Who else who has, has had that experience in your life? It's because emotions have no expiration date, unlike a carton of milk. It's as if the emotion has been affixed to a particular event, and every time you think about that event, that emotion appears. It's your defense mechanism. We just need to acknowledge it and neutralize it. And that's the essence of the emotional trauma release technique. So, you know, what is the value of optimal health? You know, 100,000, million, about 100 million. How about, how about it's priceless? Yeah. And here's an example. Paul Allen, co-founder of Microsoft, passed away, I think he had cancer last year valued at $20.2 billion. You know why he's gone? Because modern medicine didn't, didn't know how to help him. So he's no longer with us. So, um, uh, let's take some volunteers if we can. I have some release forms, so I'll just sign it after before, but come on up. 
I would like us to get a, a, a before picture, if we can, of you, and then an after picture. Someone with a... Yeah. Can we get some bef a before picture, and then tell me what's going on here. Sorry. I thought you were going to figure it out. I can do that if you want. Well, I got like three things that I'm, that I'm very well, concerned about. I'm going to use handheld mic to you so we can all hear it. Okay. I don't know which one to choose. Okay, There's hold on a second. Things. She's going to make a break. Okay. 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 And then when you take the, the picture, when you let, let me take a picture of you, one, like just release the facial expression. Well, I'm trying to figure out how to use this thing. Oh, okay. Sure he is. Is it yours or mine? <laughs> Do we want this here? Uh, yeah, I'm gonna, I have that one more slide to show. So we'll, let me move this to the side Oh, you have one more slide? Sorry. One more slide so you guys... Let me put that over here right now. Are you ready? Okay. Mm -hmm. So just that profile? Yeah, just straight on. Okay, and then no cheese. I want one with no, no cheese. cheese. No cheese. No cheese. Vegan. Okay. <laughs> good. That's good. Okay. Okay, drop that down for a second. Okay, so so um so here's what I'm gonna ask everyone to do. So I so we have we'll have if if I'm gonna do the emotional trauma release, then think about whatever that issue is that still haunts you today. And I want you to put a Check in with yourself, and from zero to ten, how much distress or anxiety do you feel that it's in your body? So, you know, unbearable or agonizing would be like you're about to cry, like you're just holding it in. It was just that, that painful that if you think about it, you're about to break down. That would be a ten. Okay, and then I want you guys to write, you know, or just pick up a piece of paper and write it down for yourself, and just hold on to it whenever you come up here. Okay. So go ahead. So what are well, your? Uh, well, I'm checking in. So my, my throat sounds is do the throat. Do I the want throat. the beat, but the, the bite is throat. Okay. So the throat. Let's have a look. All right. Okay. I'm gonna put these down because I don't need them for a moment. All right. So holding them up. Good. Put uh, square out a little bit. Which way you want to go? I just want you to bring this arm in front of you. Oh, in front. Okay. And hold. It's a little weak and clear. Let's go to the other side. So this arm is stronger. This arm is weaker. So it tells me that she has a shoulder issue on the right side. Anything going on with the shoulder? Well, yeah, I mean, sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See, I find stuff that don't have, or that, that no, you don't mention. No, no, I know there's some stuff on the shoulder. All right. Let me clear that first or later. Okay, let me let me just go through your your um, what did I say your, your your everyone has a self diagnostic mode. There's four reflexes that I check whenever I start doing this process. So actually, let me I, mean, I need to switch positions with you. Okay, so hold. I'm gonna touch your third eye, and a strong muscle goes weak, which is just, you can touch your third eye right there, and boom, power goes away. Second reflex. It's a dehydration reflex, and that's fine. The third reflex is called self-communication, and the fourth reflex is an allergy reflex. Okay, so what's going on with your throat? I have thyroid. Okay. Weight gain. Okay, so hold on to your throat. Okay, so there's some emotion associated with that. Okay, so... Uh, so, so, so are you okay to, to let us find out what that is? Sure. All right, so hold on to your throat again. Nice and weak. Hold on to the emotional reflexes and that's strong. Someone's career, uh, but it's not yours. Oh, the career. No, it is your career. Uh, what do you, tell me about what your, so your career is a coach. Right, motivational speaker. So I was a coach first, basketball okay. coach first. Think about motivational speaker. Okay, let go of that. Think about motivational speaker. That's it. And what about the motivational speaker? Do you feel confident in it or do you feel fearful about it?
so when was you, I want to see when's like the original time that you started feeling fear about a career? fighting and uh, you know from a very early age I never had a voice in our family. Uh -huh. So I'll have to ask you to project because okay. we don't have the handheld. I was just phone. saying that uh, my family, uh, my parents were educated people like but not emotionally intelligent and they fought a lot and so we never had a voice. I never got to have a voice in the family. So you weren't heard or you weren't nurtured the way you probably oh, needed yeah, to, no. to be. All right. See, okay, so think about that. Yeah, so it's that, that we can see. Okay, so. All right, let's have you put one hand on your forehead. I'm going to hold on to your thyroid. You can put this in my pocket? Yeah, put that in your pocket for now. That's not going to be in the pocket. We'll just put it down. All right. One hand where? Hold on to your forehead and put this hand by your thyroid. Take a breath in. Exhale. because that was like when I came up here, I thought I was going to talk about my feet. Uh -huh. So when I came up, I thought I was going to talk about my feet, uh, but my throat felt like it had like a big ball of tear like kind of sitting in it. Uh -huh. So I'd say it's still there, but not at the level it was. So it probably okay. was a, a nine out of 10. It's probably now at a six. Okay. From nine to a six, how long did it take me to get for, from to a nine to a six? Five Now, so that weak shoulder now powered back up. So we have more to do, but that's a good start, don't you think? Oh, it's a great start. Do you feel it younger? Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, okay, so I want to get an after picture and also feedback from the crowd. Does she look younger to you? What are you noticing? Right, her, her cheeks are rosier. More translucent. Right.
10 for us. 12 out of 10. Just think about that. Pushing up. Let me have you take out this electronic watch. Oh, yeah. I can throw us off. Now, you notice how before she, just, she didn't tap into that. She was happy-go-lucky. And we all have traumas. And then once we tap into it, you know, her whole body shifted. Her whole demeanor shifted. How much energy it's taking for her to keep that traumatic memory at bay so she can go on living her life. So we're going to try to neutralize some of that so you can have the fond memories of your, of your son without such the heartbreak that there is. Okay, pushing up. Okay, another arm. Pushing up. Okay, so both of her arms are weak, so that tells me that chances are very good that she's dehydrated. So we're going to ask someone to I get us a cup of water. Maybe wow, a I've cups. been drinking. Like, I keep Hot going to the bathroom. Yeah, I've been drinking. All right. Okay. What is it? Oh, tissues. Thank you. Well, let's try the water first. If not, yeah, then, then it's something else. Eyes open, different parts of the consciousness. So keep your eyes open, think about your son. There it is. Take a breath in. And again. And girl. Okay. Think about your son. Good. Eyes closed, think about your son. Okay. And this arm up. Think about your son. Eyes open. Now think about uh, your son with all the tubes in the coma in the hospital. Another big tough question to think about. That moment you made the decision that you're going to donate his organs to some other people. Okay. Think about that. Take a breath in.
know, just you know, uh, get in the moment, go, go to the tragedy, the tragedy, and. Uh, Go, go ahead, go ahead. Hi. Hi. I don't really trust chiropractors, but <laughs> I'm glad to okay. I'm, I'm, I'm yeah. changing my mind. Changing She's my changing her mind. mind. She doesn't really trust chiropractors. <laughs> <laughs>